my guest was given 10 hours to live. That was 34 years ago. Now his passion is to see people not die before their time. When he shares his testimony, miracles happen. Next. <laughs> Brian Wills, my guest, was 22 years of age. Good health, an athlete, college graduate. He was one day away from fulfilling the dream of a lifetime, becoming a professional tennis player, when tragedy struck. He was raised in a Christian family that believed in miracles, and now he was going to need one. Brian, what happened? One day I found myself laying in a hospital bed, and a doctor walked in and gathered our family together, and he said, young man, I've got bad news to tell you. Now, just prior to that, I had been training to go to Europe to play on the satellite tour, which is like the minor leagues of tennis. And so I had seen a doctor because I had some pain. Uh, the doctor wrote it off, said, maybe well, maybe you you're training too hard. hard. And so I found myself at this moment where I was put in a hospital. The doctors thought I had appendicitis or a kidney stone. But after nine days of testing, the doctor walked in and said, young man, I have bad news to tell you. You have a rare terminal incurable cancer. This type of cancer is one of the fastest growing cancers in the world. And so you may have two weeks or less to live. Uh, describe uh, this, this cancer. Is what, what was going on in your body at that time? Well, when they discovered it, I had a tumor the size of a golf ball. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and so it was on a Friday afternoon. We told the doctor, uh, doctor, can we uh, leave the hospital, be dismissed uh, for the weekend? Dismissed for the weekend. Because we wanted to go home. And uh, we had uh, a church family that was praying for my healing. Uh, we also wanted to attend some services where some healing evangelists uh, could pray for me. Yes. And so uh, he said, yes, that would be fine. You can leave the hospital for the weekend. But I warn you that you don't have much time. So I thought for sure I would be healed. But over that weekend, I was no better. I actually grew much, much worse. And so the next day I was uh, taken, transported to another hospital, one of the few hospitals in the world that was ever used to seeing Burkitt's lymphoma, stage 4B. And um, so when I arrived there as in a fetal position, uh, the, the cancer had grown uh, and so uh, when the doctors examined me, the tumor in my abdomen measured 10 and a half inches. And not from only that- From a golf ball to a basketball. Yeah, in 72 hours. Went from the golf ball to the size of a basketball, plus my kidneys had stopped working, other organs were beginning to shut down. And so I was admitted to that hospital. They put me on the 13th floor. I did not know this at the time, but the 13th floor, <laughs> was known as the floor of the incurables. And so nobody made it out alive. Uh, there was a Tuesday morning when I was admitted, all right? My, after the doctors examined me, they told my parents, you, you need, need to, to make the funeral, funeral arrangements because, because your, your son, son is dying. dying. Your, your son, son will not be alive by Friday. Friday. When my parents heard that, I remember they came into the examination room where I was there and my mother opened the Bible and she turned to Isaiah 53 and she said, whose report do we believe? We will believe the report of the Lord. That's good that she said that. It's good that you knew people got healed. But what's going on inside of you when you find out you're in the dying ward and 10 hours to live? Well, at that point, when I lay in that hospital room and I knew I had come to the end of my rope. And it was like, I, I saw like a vision of almost like a football game. And it was the fourth quarter. It was the two minute warning. And I was the one who was down by two touchdowns. In other words, this cancer uh, was invasive. This cancer was taking over my body. And I knew at that moment, I, I had just hours, just hours to live. And I needed God to move supernaturally for me to live. And so I began to 
prayed to the Lord and I said, Lord, Lord if you heal me, heal me, if you get, get me out, out of this situation, situation I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'll go I'll wherever, wherever you want me to go. Want me to go. Speak to whoever you want me to speak to. And when I said those words, uh, it was I, I could it, it, it was almost as if Jesus walked into my hospital room. Now I didn't see Jesus with my physical eyes, but I certainly felt his presence. The Lord said to me, Son, if you will do these steps, you will be healed. You'll walk through the fire, but not be burned. And when I heard that, I was like, steps? What do you what do you mean steps? All right. I mean, I mean, there's something that I have to do. Uh, and, and so uh, I said to the Lord, I said, okay, steps, all right? Wh what are these steps? What do these steps look like? And as I asked the question, all of a sudden on the inside, I knew the step. No one needed to tell me, but I knew that I had been holding some unforgiveness towards a person. Yeah, something that happened many years before. So God said, if you would follow these steps, you would be healed. Yes. Today, are you convinced that if anyone follows these steps, they will be healed? Absolutely. Well, when the Holy Spirit pointed out there was unforgiveness in a particular person, what would you do about it? Well, in my mind, I tried to rationalize. I said, you know, but Lord, that was a long time ago. And I wouldn't even know their phone number now. And, and, and just like that, this phone number just dropped into my spirit. And I, and I thought to myself, Hello? well, you know, that, that almost sounds like oh, the right hi. number. How I know you? that's the right area code. And so I knew hey. at that moment I had to make things that's right. And so I reached uh, over to the phone yes. and I, I picked up the phone and I, I dialed that number wow. when uh, the really person on the inside that. answered, it was the person that I needed to talk to. And so I lay there in bed, just feeling God's peace. Uh, and then hours later, a nurse would come into the room and she said, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, your, oh my kidneys, gosh, are your kidneys are working. Well, see, my kidneys had been shut down for a number of days. And so it was a confirmation to me that as I would do the steps that the Lord gave me, that He would manifest His healing power. Give me an example of a second step the Lord okay. gave you. Okay, so immediately I said, okay, Lord, what's the second step, you know? <laughs> and so he, he reminded me that I had been working for the last year and I hadn't been tithing. I remember that in Malachi, um, it says that um, if you bring the tithes and offerings, that God will rebuke the devourer. God will Listen, rebuke the devil. I need you guys to go I said, it's one thing for me take out this to rebuke, but it's, it's another Not thing for God to, to, to rebuke the devourer. So I, I told my parents, I said, Listen, I need you to go into my bank account, take out this amount of money, and, and give it to the church. And so that was the second step. The, the third step the Lord showed me was Proverbs 4, verse 20, where it says, My son, attend to my words incline that ear to my sayings, that my words are life and health and healing and medicine to all of your flesh. And so, uh, so I began to uh, take all the scripture verses and, and, and we papered all the walls of the hospital room. And I would, I would begin to say those scriptures out loud, you know, because life and death are in the power of the tongue. I will not die, but I will live and I will declare the works of the Lord. How many times would you say you said these scriptures? Some people think, well, I'll just say it once. How many times did you say it? Well, at first I began to just say uh, Psalm 160, verse 17, I will live and not die, declare the works of the Lord. Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his uh, benefits. He forgives all my iniquities, heals all my diseases. And so at first, you know, I would just say a few them a, a few times a day, but my mother stood over me and she said, no, this is not enough. We need to keep speaking the Word of God because life and death are in the power of the tongue. Well, another step we did is I spoke to the cancer. I commanded the cancer to leave my body. I commanded the cancer to die and I said, cancer, cancer you cannot take, you cannot my, take life. my life. And I command, I command all, all cancer, cancer to die, die in, in Jesus, Jesus name. name. Now you, you're in the death ward. You've got hours to live. You're commanding the cancer, but what did you do about fear? You had to be covered with Oh, yes. 
You know, for the first 10 days, I remember uh, I was tormented by fear. And so it seems like at midnight when those fearful thoughts would come, uh, I said, I cannot stand here and just not do something about it. And I, and I remember reaching behind me, you know, and turning on the light. And I began to read those scriptures over again. No, uh, I will live and not die, and declare the works of the Lord. And I began to take authority over fear. And I say, fear, I resist you in Jesus' name. God has not given, has me, not given me a spirit, spirit of fear, fear, but power, but power love, love, and a sound mind. A sound I had to mind. defeat fear before I defeated cancer. So here we were, we were going on offense, okay, as a family. So during this window of time, I actually began to get better. And, and the doctors were shocked by it because they, they had just admitted me to keep me comfortable for the last few days. And so I began to improve. And so the doctors noticed that. And so the doctor told me, he said, uh, we need, we, to, we need to have a scan. scan. We need to see where this cancer is. And so, uh, so, he, so I was, one afternoon I was taken to uh, get a CAT scan. And, um, and then at six o'clock that night, the doctor walked in my room, but he was shake, shaking. He says, Brian, uh, Brian he said, you went to you see went the to radi radiologist. radiologist. He, he called, called me and he said, uh, he said this, young man, this young man, I thought, uh, I, thought I would see cancer. I have checked, checked him, him from toe, head to toe, number times, number of times, and, and there's absolutely, absolutely no, no cancer, cancer. No, no evidence, evidence of disease in his body. In his body. After they gave you the NED, no evidence of disease, from an incurable disease in the dying ward, right. on the 13th floor of the dying ward hospital, uh, tell me what the doctor suggested. Of course, our family was ecstatic when we heard the report, right? Right. But the doctor came to us and said, well, now, um, don't, don't, get, don't get too happy now because you don't understand the nature of this disease. This disease might look like it's gone now, but it will always come back. Okay. Always come back? Yes. Well, they're not giving you much hope, are they? they uh, you have an inch and they take a mile. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, they recommended that I go through this protocol of chemotherapy, you know, seven drugs, and, uh, and so they said, we, we believe it would be the best thing for you to do. This was an experimental drug. It was, it was. Give me a brief description. How sick were you <laughs> from this medicine? Yeah, so that medicine made me very sick. This is one of the most aggressive drugs to treat an aggressive cancer. And so I lost all my hair, I lost weight. Uh, the, the, the drugs made me nauseous. Uh, uh, with a compromised immune system, all of a sudden mm -hmm. my body began to take on different uh, you know, types of other situations. And so I, uh, at one point, um, I had an infection that lasts for three weeks. In fact, I was 104, 105 degree fever. Hmm. You know, some of these steps that God told you to follow, He told you something about the power of laughter. Yes, yes. You know, the Bible says that laughter doeth good like a medicine you know, and that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so my father would bring in a joke book. And so we, we would tell jokes, okay? And, and so, uh, so there's a, a spiritual force of joy, you know? Uh, and I remember one time I was getting sick from all the medication and I actually fell into the floor, all right? My, my feet were still under the covers, but I was laying in the floor and I was getting, you know, sick. And, 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 and I just began to laugh. I began to ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 devil, it may look like you have me now, but you just wait because when I come out of this hospital, I'm gonna go around the world and preach the gospel. I'm gonna give you two black eyes, okay? You're gonna regret that you ever attacked me with cancer. Uh, tell me about the vision you had. And the vision I saw was two pitchers of water. One pitcher was a smaller pitcher of, of like dirty, muddy water. The other one was a much larger picture of a crystal clear water. And, he's, and he said to me, your, your body is like this smaller pitcher of water. It's been racked with disease and, and um, you've been going through this you know, situation. But, if, but the larger picture represents my word. 
And if you'll take the larger picture and pour it into the smaller picture, just like the law of displacement, it's, it's the, he says that, that word is, it's the washing of the water of the word. It will dispel all the sickness, all the disease that's in your body. Okay, so you were faithful on what you could do. He was following the steps that God said to follow and he would be healed. When were you released? I was released in actually August of that year. And, um, and so they told me that time if I went six months without any problems that uh, they would consider me healed and cancer free. Ryan was the only survivor from the 13th floor. Uh, but that's not all. Another miracle, even greater, was about to be revealed. Next. We will be right back to It's Supernatural! Hello, YouTube Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural! We now return to It's Supernatural! And now, when this program is over, we have a special extended segment with Brian. He is going to pray for healing and the release of your miracle. I don't want you to miss this life-changing moment. Just log on to our website after this program ends to watch the special ministry time with Brian. The presence of God is so strong. I am believing anything would be possible. Uh, Brian, after your six months, you went for a follow-up. And you got this. I guess it was a shock of your life. What did the doctor tell you? Yeah, so I went for my six month checkup, all right? And uh, as I was getting ready to leave, the doctor stopped me and he said, uh, I, need some, I, I need to tell you something. This hospital? This hospital, the doctors, the doctors here are baffled, baffled at your story. your story. Number one, you were healed from, you were cancer, healed from cancer, and there's no, and there's medical, no medical explanation, explanation for it. Also, the drugs that we had given to you during this protocol, during this protocol really, after, experimenting after experimenting with them, we realized they don't even treat this disease. Treat this disease. Not, only that, Not only that, they're so, lethal, they so lethal that everyone that, everyone that we've, given we've given these, given these drugs, drugs to, to has, has died, died except, except for you. Not only did everyone die that had these experimental drugs, everyone at that point that had his type of leukemia died. I mean, it, it was you know, you're like a quadruple miracle. I keep, I keep hearing. <laughs> uh, but OK, so you're released, you're free, you're whole, you're grateful, and you're off to do your career. He wanted to be a professional tennis player. So what did you do? So I left months later to go and pursue that dream of playing tennis. Uh, and during the time I was pursuing that, uh, my priorities changed. Because I, I remember what it was like to be sick, to be back in the hospital. I said, you know, there's too many people today that are sick and they're dying. And yet, uh, God had given me the antidote. Uh, it was my dream to do that. But one day the Lord spoke to me and said, son, I want you to know that I have my dream for you. And my dream will be far better and far more satisfying. And so it was at that point in my life that I said, okay, Lord. And I had promised the Lord if he would heal me that I would do whatever he wanted me to do. And so it was since that time uh, I set out to find that dream and find that purpose that God has given me. And so uh, after uh, I was healed, I began to share my testimony. Uh, then my wife and I went to Bible school, uh, and then since that time we have started to open up many healing schools and healing rooms in different locations. Uh, your, your passion is to stop, this is what he said to me, stop people from dying 
before their time. That, that is your heart's desire. Yeah. Now, there are people watching us right now that got a report from the doctor, and the doctor said, you'll die without this surgery. You're going to die. You have cancer. You have leukemia. Uh, you have heart trouble. You have diabetes. They just got this negative report. Tell that person right now what to do. What, what, what the first thing they should do? Well, that might be man's report. And so if you're watching this program, I'm saying that is man's report, but that is not God's report. And I can tell you that what God did in my life, He will also do in your life. If God could raise me off of a deathbed, if God could take an incurable cancer that I had and, and dissolve it and remove it and raise me up and give me new life again, I want to encourage you today that we serve the same God. The God who healed me will also heal you. He's no respecter of persons. Uh, Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. And so what God in, did in my life, He will do in yours. I want to pray for those of you that are watching. And as, as you're watching this, I don't want you to just lift up your hands and, and receive uh, your healing. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every single person who's watching. And Lord, right now, we release the healing power of God to flow into their bodies. Lord, today we cancel the enemy's assignment. We can command all disease, all infirmity to leave their bodies. And Lord, right now, I thank you for a complete and total healing. And we thank you today, Lord, for ministering life and peace and your healing power to their bodies today, right now, in Jesus' name. Now, Brian had a visitation from an angel. He was told that miracles would happen every time he shares his testimony. Brian is more than ready to pray for you and release miracles during this special extended segment. That same angel is on this set right now and will help him in this extended segment. It go right now to SidRoth.org slash Brian to join us. Call now and get Brian Will's must-read book, 10 Hours to Live, and his powerful three-part audio CD teaching series, Receiving Your Healing, plus his bonus insert, Healing Scriptures for You. This package is exclusive for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9744. You will receive Brian Will's must-read book, 10 Hours to Live. In it, Brian shares his true story of miraculous healing and supernatural living. Through his book, find out how you can overcome the most hopeless of circumstances. Learn how to apply God's Word for healing. Build your faith for the miraculous. Discover joy in the midst of suffering. Receive comfort in times of trial. This book includes many other testimonies of people who have been supernaturally healed by the power of God through the keys given by God to Brian. You will receive Brian Will's powerful three-part audio CD teaching series, Receiving Your Healing. In this anointed teaching series, Brian shares the steps God gave him to receive his dramatic healing from an incurable form of cancer. And when Brian shares these steps with others, they also get supernaturally healed by the power of God. In this how-to three-part audio CD, series, Brian shares more about his miraculous healing, the supernatural steps to healing that the Holy Spirit revealed to him, healing prayers for you that you can also pray over others. God told you if you would follow these steps, you would be healed. What about me? What about the people watching right now? God told me that if I would follow the steps that He gave me, that I would be healed. And I also believe for each one of you, that if you will follow the same steps, that you also will be healed. Plus, you will also get his bonus insert, Healing Scriptures for You. Don't miss out on getting Brian Will's must-read book, 10 Hours to Live, and his powerful three-part audio CD teaching series, Receiving Your Healing, plus his bonus insert, Healing Scriptures for You. This package is exclusive for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9744. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9744 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today.
now return to It's Supernatural. I'm here with Brian Wills. And uh, on this set is not only Brian Wills and myself. There is his angel is on this set. I've been feeling him for quite a while right now. Uh, tell me about the, vis the visitation you had from your angel. So several years ago, I uh, was in a revival meeting, and the evangelist pointed his finger at me, and he said to me, uh, step out into the center aisle of the church. And so when I did, all of a sudden I fell out under the power of God. And when I did, uh, what appeared to me was this huge angel. This, and, and I remember thinking, wow, this angel is so huge and, and majestic. And, I remember looking at his feet and looking into his eyes. He had golden hair. He had a golden satchel. Uh, and so this angel said, I've come from the throne of God to deliver a message to you. And he said to me, first of all, uh, you haven't been sharing your testimony enough. That if you'll begin to share your testimony more, then you'll uh, see uh, God's glory. You'll begin to see God's miracle working power begin to uh, take place in meetings, okay? Uh, he began to com confirm some things about my calling, my purpose, right? He was preparing me for some things that were, you know, coming up in the days ahead. Uh, and so uh, then, he, then he began to give me the uh, gifts, gifts. And, uh, and how, how did he give you the gifts? It, it was like he was reaching in, um, almost like you can imagine a present or a gift, and, and it, he would reach into him and it would come right into me. And at first, my natural mind was like, what, what is this? I knew that I was receiving something. Could you feel it? I didn't necessarily feel it, but I knew on the inside, uh, I, was, I was receiving uh, a gift, obviously, uh, from the angel. So that's from almost like when you pray for people to be healed in a few minutes, whether they feel anything or not, that healing is going into them. Would you agree? Yes. Later, uh, I realized he was giving me gifts like the gift of faith, the working of miracles, the gifts of healings, okay, for the calling, for the purpose that God has for me. You, you know what's so wonderful? He goes into hospitals, into children's cancer wards. Give me an example of one hospital and what happened. So uh, one time in Nairobi, Kenya, uh, I took a group of students from Jerry Savelle's Bible School, okay? At first, they wouldn't let us into the hospital. The chaplain said, well, you don't have the necessary paperwork. But after we began to talk to him, we realized he, he said, well, I have a daughter that's here in the hospital, and she's blind. And we ha they, they don't know why she decided to go blind at 15 years of age. I said, well, would you let us pray for her? And so he did. So we went in, we prayed for her, and just like that, she regained her sight. Well, then that changed his heart. And he said, well, I think we can let you in to the children's cancer ward. Hmm. So he went into the children's cancer ward. I shared my testimony. We, we said, we want to pray for you. The power of God is going to touch your body. Uh, and of course, you know how kids are. They're just so receptive. Uh, and so as we did, we began to see tumors dissolve. And these kids began to get excited. They said, the, the, this tumor and that tumor. And, and, uh, and so they began to jump around and, and run up and down the hallway. And so we saw the power of God move into, into the children's cancer ward. Did, did you actually see these children that were there with these cancers uh, get up, put on their regular clothes and leave? <laughs> well, that, that was next. We went into the adult cancer ward. Then they also led us into the hospice unit. And the, and the same thing happened. The power of God hit this well, well, place. Well, a hospice unit, that's where people go to die, like that 13th right. floor you were on. Right, right. Yeah, even in the hospice unit, okay, uh, that we were allowed in. And, and so we would go into a room that had four to five beds to it, and I would stand and I'd say, now listen, we're, we're from such and such Bible school. We want to pray for you. When we pray for you, God wants to heal you. And that's all we said to them. So then we went out and began to pray for them. And, 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 we be, and they began to notice a change in their body. Uh, I remember the first guy, he had a tumor on his kneecap. 
and, and he reached down and the tumor had dissolved. And so he stood up and he was, he was testing his knee out. And then another person said, oh my goodness, the, the lump that was under my arm is gone. And so uh, we began to move from one room to the next room, okay? Because by that time we didn't have a whole lot of time to stay. And so, but we began to see in each room, God began to move in people that had on their deathbed, on their deathbed with their loved ones sitting there, you know, crying at their side. Uh, they began to see a change and see the cancer leave their bodies, all right? Well, this got the attention of the hospital floor administrator. She, she had been working that uh, unit for 26 years. She came to us and she literally fell on her knees. And she said, my God, my God, look what is happening. She said, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian. I've been a Christian all my life, but I have been uh, on this hospice unit for 26 years watching people die every single week. And she said, look at what is happening because these people uh, were, were happy. They were getting up. They were putting on their street clothes, <laughs> ready to be dismissed from the hospital. And she said, my God, my God, this has really strengthened my faith. Now, he also goes on to college campuses and he loves to pray for athletes that are on injured reserve. They've, they've done something that they can't play sports anymore, football or basketball. Uh, tell me about one or two. Well, one time I was at Minnesota State University. This young man came and he had a bandaged knee uh, and we were holding miracle services. We were, we were sharing about healing on these college campuses. And so this young man came and he was curious. He wanted to know, uh, about it. He had never heard about God's healing power. And so he said, do you, do you think that God could actually heal me? I mean, I, I, I'm on one of the uh, top football teams in the country, and, and, uh, but I'm out for the season. Do you think that God could do it? I said, absolutely. And so I prayed for him. You know, at first I didn't necessarily see something instant. I said, well, why don't you walk it out? Why don't you do whatever you can? You know, I mean, uh, you know, he was in a, a lot of pain. Well, he, he left the meeting that night. Well, the next night he shows up and he's and and he is he doesn't have any bandage anymore and he is uh, jumping up and down. He's excited. He said, "You would not believe, but throughout the night, my healing began to manifest." He said, "When I woke up, I went to practice football practice in the morning. Then in the afternoon, I went to football practice. The coach called me over and he said, "Hey, what happened to you?" And he said, well, this guy was on campus and he prayed for me and, and Jesus touched my knee and, and I'm healed. And, and the coach Do you said, realize football teams, professional football teams should hire this man <laughs> yesterday? <laughs> well, well, then the coach said, I want you to share this testimony to the rest of the team. So he did. So the team members said, well, can I come? You know, I need healing for this and for that. And so, uh, so the next night we prayed for more athletes. I, I, I'll tell you, uh, let's just have a few more and then I'll have you pray. Tell me about Michelle, whose kidneys fail. We've seen many healings where people stood on the Word of God. Uh, Michelle was one. Uh, I got a call one time from her husband, never had met him. And, and he said, I, I received your name from somebody. And uh, my uh, wife is in a desperate situation. She's in a coma. Her kidneys have failed. Would you come? So I came, and, and so I said, well, I'm going to share you what the, with you what the Bible says, and I began to share healing scriptures. So I said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to speak life. We're going to speak these scriptures over your wife. And so I began to show him how to do it. So he would, he would repeat after me, my wife shall live and not die, and declare the works of what by Jesus' stripes my, my wife is, is healed. So we did that for a number of hours. Now, now, I needed to leave, you know, after midnight. And I said, but if you'll continue to just do what I'm telling you to do, God's words are life. God's words are medicine. God's words are healing. And so he did. Well, uh, I, I got a phone call the next morning at about 7 a.m. He was on the line and said, I am, I am so excited. Do you realize my wife woke up in the middle of the night? Now, he told me that the nurses, as, as he was speaking the word of God, the, the the, uh, the monitors begin to change. Uh, 
all right, during the night, all right, and, and so she, she, she was receiving healing, and then in the morning, she woke up and she came out of the coma and she was healed. You know, in the society we live in, so many of you are waiting for a feeling and not trusting that the Word of God is accurate, it's alive, it comes from heaven, it penetrates every cell of your body, but it operates on a commodity that is essential in this life. It's called faith. And if you will proceed with the Word of God as if it's fact, which it is, by faith, which you must operate under, feeling or no feeling, I believe that no weapon formed against you can prosper. Okay, tell me one case of a, of a, of a cancer, not your own, uh, the, 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 uh, how about the esophagus cancer? Yes, so I had a friend of mine who was diagnosed with esophageal cancer, and uh, he was given six months or less to live. No, no people usually don't recover from right, that type. Like they a, do, but not. It's like maybe. less than a 5% chance of recovery. Right. And so uh, he didn't know anything about healing, so I said, well, let me show you, let me teach you. So uh, he began to take hold of the, the same scriptures, uh, and he began to speak uh, to the cancer and command it to die. Just like Jesus said, we can speak to the mountain. Uh, he began to call himself healed. He began to say, by Jesus' stripes, I was, and by Jesus' stripes, I am healed, okay? Now, he had to go through uh, different checkups, right? And, and he always didn't, didn't want to like, hear what the doctor had to say. But I said, Butch, if you'll just keep doing it, all right, you're gonna begin to see. Because if you work the word, the word will work for you, okay? And so uh, it took about six months, okay? Uh, and then one time he went back to the doctor there and the doctor took an x-ray. The doctor says, I can't believe it, but there's no more cancer in your body. Get ready to either have a healing or a miracle. A miracle is an instant healing. A healing is a gradual, miracle either way but i i am i am believing for a lot of miracles uh, that angel still here absolutely i want you to pray the way god tells you to pray for people to be healed right now look into the camera i know that there are people that are watching this program uh, i can see there are people that are laying in hospital beds. You've been given a bad diagnosis by the doctor. And I want to pray for you to come out of that hospital bed and for you to be healed. Um, I see a guy by the name of Ted. Ted, I see that you've been struggling with a back pain, back, a lower back pain. You've taken medication and you're no better. But I, I command that back pain to leave your body right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, I see another woman named Martha. Martha, you've been diagnosed with breast cancer, but I, I declare right now that that cancer is leaving your body in the mighty name of Jesus. I, I, I sense that there are some other folks that are here that it's, it's like the devil has convinced you that you don't have enough faith or, or, or people have even told you that you don't have enough faith, that if you just had more faith, well, I, I tell you what, if you didn't have faith, you still wouldn't be alive today. And the Bible says that, that uh, God has given to every man the, the measure of faith. So I want to say to you, there's nothing wrong with your faith. I remember a number of years ago, there was a woman that had six no 68 nodules, 68 nodules in her body. The devil had, co had convinced her that she didn't have enough faith. And I said, no, there's nothing wrong with your faith. I prayed for her and within three weeks, 68 nodules disappeared. And so uh, the enemy will always try to make you feel insufficient and inadequate. But I want you to know that Jesus is greater than any sickness, any disease. So uh, as you're watching this program, I want you to just reach out. You're not reaching out to me to receive, you're reaching out to Jesus. And so I wanna to begin to pray and release the anointing, the power of God. Greater is the anointing in us than any sickness that's trying to take place in our body. So Father, right now, I pray for everyone who's watching. 
Lord, right now in the name of Jesus Christ, the name that's above every name, Father, I cancel the enemy's assignment. I come against all infirmity, all cancer, all disease right now in the name of Jesus, and I break the power of sickness. I break the power of disease right now in Jesus' name, and we release that anointing, that healing power, that healing power in the name of Jesus. Lord, right now, minister health, minister healing, minister life. The same uh, spirit that raised up Jesus Christ dwells in us. And Lord, we thank you for resurrection power. Lord, those that are on their deathbed right now, Lord, that are crying out desperate for help. Father, right now, resurrection life, resurrection life being released. Raise them up just like you raised me up. Lord, those that have uh, diagnosed with cancer, we command those tumors to dissolve right now in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you right now for touching people all over the world, Lord. And I just encourage you right now to say, Jesus, Jesus, you're my healer. Jesus, you're my healer. Thank you, Jesus, for touching my body and for healing me right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Tell you what, there's such a presence of God, whether he named your condition or your name, God knows your name. God knows your condition. And Jesus said, by my stripes, you were healed were healed, not will be, were healed. First Peter 2.24, by his stripes you were healed. I uh, also heard some words of knowledge, and what I heard, I actually saw a, a left arm, and any pain, your fingers, the pain is gone. Your hand, the pain is gone. Your wrist, your pain is gone. Your elbow, your pain is gone. It's now going to your back and your neck. I'm telling you, if you just demonstrate your faith by standing up and shaking it off, you'll see that the pain is gone. And then the Lord told me, although it was the left arm, it could also be the right. He paid the price for the right also. Is there anything else God is showing you? Well, people need to know that healing is not just a promise, but, he, but healing is a purchase. Jesus purchased it for you 2,000 years ago. So when we ask for healing, we're not asking God to do something that he hasn't already done. So just receive that purchase. Just receive your healing in Jesus' name. I want you to send those reports and don't get faked out by the devil. If it hasn't manifested yet, double up on the promises of God. <laughs>